Welcome back to Estacada, Oregon, for the final round of the Beaver State Fling. I'm Ian Anderson, sitting next to Pro Tour champion Nathan Queen. Yeah, back here for the final round on the East Course. Might have slightly less rain today, but you never know. The forecast ke keeps changing up here in the Pacific Northwest. Got a fantastic lead card. GG threw a fantastic round yesterday. He's got a stroke or two over Corey Ellis. Uh, Linus Carlson also on the card, as well as Adam Hammes. Going to try and chase him down on this beautiful Milo East course. Tough to score, but we'll see what they can do. Yeah, I'm excited to see how they attack it. And there he is, Gary Gerthy, sitting with a one-stroke lead. And the rest of the Jets are going to try and chase him down as they work their way around this tough, tough track. We are back hole 18 last year. It's hole one this year. It's a tough one to get. Yeah, 360 feet, very strange angle. Got to kind of throw it on a hyzer and then have a late stand-up to skip straight through this corner. Yeah, what are you, what are you throwing? Um, I go with a Roadrunner turnover shot. You got the turnover line, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the gap over on the left side's pretty tough. I did that until the tournament started. Did you? Yeah, yeah. It, it used to be a lot bigger, a lot more forgiving, but it's really grown over, over there on that lefty hyzer forehand line. Double G on the box. T-Bird in G's hands. Looks to be on a pretty good line. Oh, yeah. Straight through the middle. He's inside the circle. Great touch for that shot. Yeah, it um, looks like a basic hyzer, but it's anything but. Yeah, being able to throw that slower fairway driver uh, is a big plus on this hole with the arm speed that he has. It makes that skip a lot easier to control into that green. It does. Corey Ellis, let's see if he can fight back off the weirdness that happened to him yesterday. He handled it well, though. It happened to the correct person for the situation, which hopefully won't arise again. Yeah. This also looks like a pretty good line out of Corey. Oh, my goodness. Almost puts it on top of, of Double G's disc. Matching shot for shot early. Yeah, two best shots we've seen so far, I think. I mean, we should have the Corey Ellis rule, right? Just if it falls through the ball in the basket, it still counts. Like, we can just throw that out there. <laughs> Linus Carlson. Absolute crusher. Yeah, he's had five A tier wins last year. Dang. Uh, just I mean, a pretty incredible stat. Pulls this one just a bit wide. He'll have a long look, long obstructed look from circle two. Yeah, almost swung it in in time. Adam Hammes. When playing hot, man, this guy is just unstoppable. Yeah, once he gets the putter going, he gives him himself a chance, then he's uh, pretty much going to make that putt when he's on. It feels like it. Pretty good line. Might be a little low, but does get a good skip forward. He'll be right around circle's edge with the birdie look. Wow, three really good drives and one that wasn't far off. The gents are off on your lead card final day at Milo. Linus from 59. And what a great line. With the low ceiling still able to get it high enough and just a bit too high, actually. Mm -hmm. Almost connects. Adam for birdie. Well, it was a bit right side. Um, I was curious whether it would push out or not. Uh, that actually pushed through, though. A bit unfortunate. And now Corey has to putt after watching that for birdie. Yeah, a little bit closer. A little bit left, but able to connect on that one. Didn't have too much weird reaction on the chains. And Garrett, to get that one stroke lead back. And what, what feels Garrett's got to bring into the round today after, you know, Portland Open finish and 
fighting his way back to another lead card. Yeah, he's got to be super excited to be up here on the lead card. Going to go ahead and hit that first putt dead center, keeping the nerves down. Uh, but, yeah, great run here. He was very excited last week just to be back in the mix again. Mm -hmm. And just such a heartbreak on that last hole. Oh so, my gosh, you man. know he's going to be working hard this round. Adam, disappointing par. A very nice birdie. Yeah, just under a quarter of the field able to get the birdie on that hole. So pretty difficult to get the birdie. A couple players here pretty close, and two of them got it. This hole's got to be a lower birdie percentage, I would think. Yeah, this is the fourth most difficult hole. Still 20% of the field able to get the birdie Dang. at 414 feet. Big high turnover shot with something stable enough to come to float back out but not dive back out. Um, Right-handed backhand mid-range if you have the power or neutral fairway driver. I'm trying to think of a hole like this in disc golf other than here, and I'm coming up empty. No, there's not many. G pushes the rock three a little long. He's into the tree line. Yeah, didn't quite get the turn he needed on that one. Mm -hmm. If you fall down underneath those branches, it's pretty tricky. If you get far enough past him, you've got a pretty open line. Corey Ellis. Good mid as well. Buzz. Just throwing it up into the stratosphere and letting it coast down. Still uh, maybe not just a bit early and flies wow. maybe flies maybe like sixty feet backwards there. <laughs> Wild. Alinus. He's going slow and overstable with the suspect. I like the idea of something that'll fight out of that big ante. Yeah, it looks to be pulled a little wide, though, and is going to fight out pretty early. Hopefully he got deep enough into those woods that he'll have that little fairway down there. Yeah, he and G both penetrated the tree line pretty pretty far. They've got that back door alley. Adam. Still looks a little wider than you want to have it, but he nope. Still gonna <laughs> still gonna fade out a bit early, and uh, maybe be the farthest back of anybody. I think you're right. Actually, he's a little over 100 feet away around the corner. Here is the pitch up. Oh, 90 feet. Excuse me. Yeah, he stayed far enough out that he had an arm swing at least. He gets up there inside the circle, a little closer than his last putt. Yeah. Hopefully, he can keep that out of his mind and hit those chains again. Linus pitches up for a par, which is all you can do. Garrett, the same thing, same spot. Floating the Sonic over there. Here's where Corey got himself. A little pitch up forehand from 75 feet, it looks like. Yeah, pretty tricky hole. Very difficult to trust yourself to, to really hug that inside. But as soon as you don't, you push long like all of these players yep. did. And now Adam looking at the par save. Perfect putt. There you go. Not shaken by that first putt. Jams in the par, which is what the majority of players did on yeah. this hole today. 65%. Only 2% were able to park the hole. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Such a touchy, touchy angle, speed, nose angle, all those things. You got to hit perfectly. Everybody dropping in pars. And they will be on to the next. Oh. We have Adam's par putt. 
very little wobble, just clean release right to the center of the pole. Yeah, super directed. Looking at hole three, man, this is a shape, isn't it? Yeah, another bonus birdie feel here. Got to get a super high forehand hyzer or a big right-handed backhand turnover and just kind of crash these branches. There is a gap in there that you can get through. If you get through that and hit the hill, maybe you won't roll away and you'll stay inside the circle. Uh, but very difficult to get up on top of this. To get up on top where the basket's at, you probably need about 480 foot mm -hmm. of hyzer power or yeah. turnover power. Seems like maybe one in 20 drives I watch get up there. Yeah, Garrett trying. He's got this real high, but looks to be a little inside. And fights through a oh. lot of stuff. And he is in there maybe with a look. He's probably got a couple branches in his way, but inside the circle. Yeah, correct. Ellis. Just going Buzz SS. The whip on Corey is just unreal, man. Yeah, it's incredible what he can do. Barely has a run-up. 65 miles an hour <laughs> with a buzz. Throwing it up higher than Garrett did. Mm, bad Plinko, though. Yeah, at least he gets the slide down to kind of that secondary fairway in there. He should have a pretty open or fairly easy pitch up. Carlson? That's too wide. Yeah, this may be more of just a par play going for the gap, but it, I think this is going to miss the gap long. And that's actually the worst spot to be. Yeah, it's no good over there. It's really thick in that particular location. Adam. Also a little early, but fights through into that secondary fairway up there. Mm -hmm. Maybe have a long look, but likely a three. Yeah, it's a very common result. Let's see if Linus can grab himself a three. Not looking uh, <laughs> awesome in there, is it? No, it looks like he's going to try to scramble with a forehand out, put a little flex on it, and match the hill to land. He does get it to float back out. He's inside the circle now. So Corey, with a chance to give this a bid, has some branches that's going to keep him having to have this nose up and rising the whole way. going to be tough to put the height you want out of the hand. Online, but finding the cage. A similar look here, but a little bit farther left, so the branches might not come to come into play just as much. Oh, and does the same thing. So difficult to get your putt high enough. That's a long putt. It's scary, too. Mm -hmm. yeah, you don't want to blow too far past the basket. you got a death putt coming back the other way. Carlson to save par. And he pushes that one high and right. Seemed a bit rushed I wonder, for him. I wonder if he was trying to not slide down the hill. Probably. Yeah, this is a pretty steep hill and very muddy right now. You can see most of those... Little lines you see are people's foot sliding yeah. as Garrett. <laughs> what a birdie. Yeah, gets a bonus birdie here. 14% of the field able to get it. Garrett Gerthy, one of them, going to extend his lead now. A little cushion. To two strokes. It always feels good to have more than one. It does. Carlson to save bogey. And no problem with that one. We'll have a couple par camp. Tap-ins, excuse me, coming from Ellis and Adam. See how gingerly he's walking up there. I, I could barely make it up this hill without my umbrella using as a little... Yeah, this is going to try to be a lot of arm swing. Hopefully doesn't move his feet too much. Mm -hmm. Able to connect. I think Adam's going to have slightly better footing up here by this little 
That was a nice place to nestle, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's like a looks like a Japanese maple. Girthy stroke on the card doubles the lead to two. And we're going to head over to hole four. Great woods hole in Milo. Oh, get check scores first. Anybody shooting fire? Joel Freeman's making a push. Evan Scott's making a push. But G's lead feels six is a lot of strokes to get from the chase card. So I feel like we'll, we'll be watching our leaders. But. We'll keep an eye on those guys as well. Uh, tell us about our lines here, Nathan. Yeah, 323 feet. You've got this right, right-handed backhand turnover where the drone is flying to kind of sneak through these trees here, see if you can pinball your way there. There's also a flex line with a forehand off to the left side of that big tree um, where if you can get your disc to fly straight until that tree and then fade right rather than flex, that's the ideal line. But flex will get you close to the circle also. G has found the roller line. Going Roadrunner. Ooh, and the chances you take, right? Yeah, he'll still have to fight through those Plinko trees, but when you're as close to them as he is, the gaps are a lot easier to hit. Mm -hmm. Corey. Corey really liked that roller line from Garrett. I wonder if he hadn't seen it earlier. We might be seeing this right now, but goes to his planned shot, a little turnover backhand. Yeah, just a little bit low. Did sneak through there a little bit. He'll have a long circle two look. Mm -hmm. Adam has a great forehand. Let's see if he can take advantage of that pure flex line. Is this, is this what you go for as a lefty? It is. Uh, he's missed this inside, but could get through some. It's he, the best of the bunch. <laughs> yeah, he does get through some into some <laughs> some more bushes over there. <laughs> yes, very true. But he may have a look. Carlson. Very right, but again, might get lucky. It kind of did. Yeah, sometimes you have a little look in there. It's not the thickest stuff. It's just a lot of it. Yeah, exactly. Garrett, circle two bid. Oh, nearly fairway bid. This would be a confidence builder right here if he's able to connect. Yeah. Does give it a good bid, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, honest effort for sure. Doesn't leave it short. Absolutely was trying to make that. Carlson looking for an alley in. I don't know that he can actually see the basket 100%. Solid effort. Yeah, also not bad. Nice to be able to have a full arm swing for it. Not quite able to connect, though. Corey, 43 feet. To grab back that stroke he lost on the last. And mm. just has to move around that tree with his body, it yeah. seemed like. Not a natural movement for his putt. Adam, oh, with the little stabber. That was cool. Just a little bit too fast. I, I bet he expected that to drop mm -hmm. and just stayed on line. Garrett sneaks in the par save. Looking like pars all around for your league card. Well, most likely, anyway. Corey still has a little bit of a tester. And just in case you guys forgot, it's still wet. It's still wet. <laughs> this is like the middle wetness day, I want to say. For, for As far as the rainfall, but yeah. the, no matter where you're at, the ground, was, yeah. you have to pay attention. You don't just get to walk this weekend. You have to see six inches in front of you where you're about to step to make sure you're not going to fall over. <laughs> Did you fall for any of those floating wood chips that were just floating on a puddle? Almost. I've <laughs> worn my card about some in front of a tee pad one time. Uh-huh. <laughs> they got me once. Everybody making good on par. Oh, mildly boring hole four for their leaders. Yeah, about a quarter of the field got that one, so... Not too far off of what the rest of the field did, but maybe expect a birdie off of the lead. Garrett's putt is working early. A good sign for him. We'll be back in just a few. 
We want to take a quick moment to talk about today's video sponsor, Disc Dot. Disc Dot is the putting aid of choice for some of the best putters on the Disc Golf Pro Tour, and it's easy to see why. This simple target can easily be moved around the basket to help you practice a variety of putts depending on what you're trying to work on. The dots come in a multitude of vibrant colors and have some great customization options to help you support some of your favorite players out there on the tour. So if you're looking to gain an advantage on the putting green, look no further than Disc Dot. Say it with me, putting is easy especially when you have Distot on your side. Welcome back to Milo. We are looking at hole 597 foot musket. Musket is the correct word. You've got two gaps to hit. The one that the drone is flying down right now, and just to the left of those three trees you see, you can push a forehand, or I guess even a backhand, to slide up there late, but forehand and then go left of these two trees to kind of dump in. Uh, but if if you don't hit one of these gaps, you feel pretty silly about it. This whole game, I don't know, the tee pad pointing the wrong direction, I don't know what it is, but I, I can never throw a good tee shot on this one. Yeah, you really got to... Take your mind off of that tee pad <laughs> yeah. and just hit this simple line that's here. Garrett does so nicely. Going to slide right up to the bullseye. Putting that AVR X3 just outside. What a shot. Ellis. Also going putter. Uh-oh. Oh, and just sneaks oh. past those inside trees or those outside trees. I was with you, man. I didn't think he yeah. was going to do it. I thought he did what I did and threw it right at him. Uh, those things are killers, man. They are great at catching discs and rolling them backwards, too. Adam will show you the forehand line. This is inside of the forehand line. Well, I, the way that he lined that up, I believe that is you think what he intended oh, okay, cool. to do. Uh, just to play off to the right of the basket. Hmm. Not a bad play with a soft finishing disc like that. Carlson. Oh, and he also just squeaking inside of those trees. We have what you are supposed to see here on hole five, four looks inside 25 feet. Yeah. Maybe even inside 20. I think you're right. Ellis to kick off the star frame. No problem for the pride of West Virginia. Adam. He might be Wisconsin's finest. You know? Could be. Yeah. We'll say he is. He yeah. gets the birdie. Here, lead card, Beaver State fling. 56% uh, 50 per of the field did get, get the birdie one. on this hole. Uh, on, I'll have to shout it out because it surprises me. 5%. So five players did take a bogey on this hole. I won't scroll down and look at the names, but... I hope it was uh, like Birdogies. You're running long birdie putts and you missed the comebacker. Hopefully so. Hopefully. Hopefully. Birdie drop ins for Carlson and Girthy. Matching the bird from Ellis. G holds on to those two strokes. As we head into hole six, it is a backhand hyzer or a forehand roller. Yeah, tight little gap that you have here. You want to hit the straight gap that you see right now and then have a quick fade off to the left side, maybe get a little bit of skip. You can't throw it too fast because you'll push, push long and be in all this stuff on the right. If you saw it off, you might have a chance to sneak through and get up there for a downhill look. But not as easy as you would think for a 281-foot hole. Yeah, it's pretty tight. Girthy, that is a wraith in his hand. We'll see a forehand roller. And sneaking up that inside, he's going to go ahead and park it maybe. There it goes. Now we stop. Ellis. Going to get him another birdie. Put the pressure on Corey to not lose another stroke. Mm -hmm. Needs to stay close to put some pressure on G. This is high from Ellis and pays the price. Yeah, and he is going to lose another one. G's going to take that three-stroke lead. A 
That's a nice little cushion. Adam. A little oh. inside and just catches something. He looks like he may have still gotten a circle too, though. And that little slide down to the right. Opened it up. Could open it up for that long range we know Adam likes to hit. Carlson. And that is the intended shot. Does it perfectly. He's going to be 20 feet looking for the birdie. Corey Ellis, 98 feet looking for the birdie. Yeah, that's the right amount of aggression there laying up for par. Take your medicine. Yeah, Corey's always been a pretty smart player, but can definitely be aggressive when he needs to be. So true. Adam from 49. Going to be aggressive for sure. Oh, off the mask again. Dang. And almost goes down afterwards. This, that hill is treacherous. Yeah, gotta watch your foot. Uh-huh. <laughs> Carlson, good birdie, sir. Yeah, getting back on track after that bogey on three. He's now got two birdies in a row. There we go. It's not a row yet, I guess. He's now got back-to-back -back birdies to put himself one under I think under two down. birdies in a row is still in a row. Yeah, yeah. I think it plays. And G. <laughs> Ever so careful. Slowly making his way Look, farther away from his disc. Now he has to come back up the hill. Yeah, this was the worst. Uh, this was the worst hole as far as the mud yeah. and slipperiness goes. He's probably celebrating more that he didn't fall right there than he is the birdie. <laughs> so true. I love that little dance he did to get to his disc. That was fantastic. A drop in there for Corey. We've got one more drop in for Adam. Two and two. That feels like better than the average, was it? Uh, yes. 32% of the field got the birdie, but it did average at a 2.8. Oh, okay. Carlson on the pole for the birdie. Well done there on hole six. Can it keep it going? Here are your scores through six. Garrett Gerthy, three-stroke lead. Joel Freeman is pushing with a five. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Kevin Jones also shooting a good round mm. so far, four down. And here we are at hole seven. A Another right-handed backhand hyzer hole, 404 feet. You want to hit the gap right here and have it start moving left, but make sure you're low enough to miss these branches. Uh, inside or outside of that double tree you see there will work just fine. Um, mm -hmm. But if you have the speed to throw a disc on a hyzer, pushing straight and then finish, that's going to be the ideal play. Once you try to put any flex or turnover on it, you're not going to get far enough left. Mm -hmm. It is a really big ass distance wise. Only 404, but uphill, and like you said, that shape's so demanding. Garrett. We're not usually a problem for this man, though. Definitely not. And this looks to be pretty ideal as long as it misses branches, but too far. Yeah, too Garrett, fast. That's, isn't that crazy, man? I just unbelievable. Yeah, on a hyzer. He did get that on a hyzer straight push I was talking about yeah. just too much. Carlson. And this is never gonna get far enough left. Yeah, you really gotta hug that left side, don't you? On that hyzer line. Yeah, you can't have any stand up. You don't want your disc to stand up or move right at all. It's gotta be straight. As soon as it moves right, you won't be in circle one. Ellis. This is a better line. So still not even in circle one. Yeah, not quite. It looks like he went with more of a neutral flight rather than an overstable disc there. Mm -hmm. Didn't get a really hard finish to the left. You saw a lot of this this weekend. Oh, my. But the video would never be over if we <laughs> left all of that in. And going inside of that tree, yeah, that must have slipped out still. He's yeah. going to be early, but should have a chance to save the par. Not Pretty, the easiest look, though. Yeah, a little difficult. He's got to go either through two trees or around. He's going through them and does it so well. 
His forehand touch with that zone. What a shot. It's so cool. Carlson just pitching in for par. Could have done that better. Yeah, I'm sure he was looking to miss the grass and just kind of slide yeah. up there. Garrett, whose hyzer pushed long on a 400-foot hole. Probably going to try to give this a soft bid, but catches something along the way. He'll be all right tapping in his par. And Ellis, a chance to grab a stroke on the card and close the gap back to two. What else do you expect? Yeah, you expect that to go in when Corey's putting it with a clean look like that. Yeah, clean three down now, just one behind for the round. Catching himself back up just a little bit to Garrett. Two. It's a, it's, it's, that's one hole, you know. Adam to save par. No problem on that make for Hammis. And Carlson. Going to do the same. Yeah, 17% of the field able to get the birdie on this one. Lots of pars, 70, 70%, 70 Is pars it? on the hole out of 99 players today. It makes sense. I'm sure most people are online just coming up short, you know, or leaving it wide, one of the two, which makes for a pretty easy par from there. Corey Ellis. Right on the pole. Man, can't These put it in a better spot. Rain slow-mos, man. They're always the best. <laughs> Gotta love it. They are miserable to film, but they are nice and cozy to watch. Yes. Hole eight. A difficult birdie on seven. We go into what was the easiest hole on the course during round one. It is very close now. Still averaging at over a half stroke under par. It's the second easiest hole on the course. 585 feet. Pusher drive. 300 feet forward and you'll have a look at the basket if you move up to the left then you have a shorter look at the basket mm -hmm. um, but only trouble really is if you get your disc moving right and end up too far straight you won't have a, a ceiling high enough to get to the pin or if you hyzer out too early you'll be in some trouble also Ellis this looks a little early that's a good skip though yeah nice skip Probably can't see the pin, but still going to be 300 away. Perfectly called, sir. Yeah. Girthy. This is overturned from Garrett, and he's going to pay the price. That's advantage Ellis. Yeah, that's not something... I mean, you see some players hit that tree, but it's not something you see very often. Uh, luckily, he did roll back down into the middle and with Garrett's power I don't know the angle he has but I'm still expecting he may have a birdie putt Carlson puts it out in the fairway beautifully that's the you know traditional smart landing zone over there Hammis looking to put it in the same spot and that is oh. good kick right no nope. oh, kicks down so girthy let's see what he's got left Yeah, a little pinched off but he's gonna go way high here just booms it. 390 in. Come on. I mean, it's a great shot, but it's still yeah. short. Yeah. Yeah. Adam from almost a worse spot. Actually, definitely a worse spot. Yeah, he's just going to be playing to get around the corner now. Somewhere where he would like his drive to land. And does so well. He'll have a fairly easy pitch up to get his par. Yeah, I think so. Carlson put his drive in this ideal spot. Just 263 left to the pin. This is kind of bad, Nathan. Yeah, too low. I think it had the power if it, it was higher, mm -hmm. but this uh, this wet grass is not allowing any skips. No. And Ellis, like you guessed, right, right around 300 to the pin, but the angle is it's a little... Oh, 250 even. So, but yeah, just. Yeah, a little closer. He's going to have to, it looks like he want, would want to throw a stalling, a, uh -huh. a nose up stalling shot, but he may also have an angle to throw a steep hyzer. Yeah, he's going more of a. But pushes it long. Yeah. And then rejected the other way. Missed opportunity. 
you know? Definitely so. Yeah, Garrett gave him a chance to gain a stroke off of the tee. And he that wasn't an easy upshot, but definitely one he could have executed. Adam pitching up with his third. Ooh, oh, it's a little fast. Hopefully he can save par for there, from there. Girthy, a long chance at birdie. Pitching it up nicely. Knows what he needs to do. Yep. Knows Corey is most likely not getting a birdie, but he has a chance. Yeah, I was in a pretty similar spot to this. There's not... <laughs> that tree block? There's about, not much room there. No. Putting in between that little tree and the big tree? Yeah. 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 Or going around it, the branches are still pretty low. There's one little branch you can't see that sticks out. <laughs> In like in the middle of those little and big tree, and one got him. Unfortunately, it nestled very close though. Carlson, for a stroke on the card on the second easiest hole. Yeah, pretty strange here. <laughs> He's gonna need it from circle two. Gonna go ahead and jam it in there, redeem the card a little bit, and get one birdie <laughs> on here. That would have been pretty embarrassing. All, all pars in the second easiest hole from the league card, but Carlson making good. There is a good par save from Adam. Yeah, he had to work for that par. Mm -hmm. It was not easy after the tee shot. Ellis comes back for his four, and that is Girthy's AVR X3 sitting on the chips right there. He will drop in a four as well. Maintaining a two-stroke lead. Yeah, and after playing the second easiest hole on the course, we go to one of the hardest as the third most difficult. But Lean is here. That just outside the circle step putt, right on line the whole time. Good advertisement, too. Lands in the basket well. <laughs> it was, wasn't it? Man, I hope you got a roller, Nathan. Yeah, one of the harder, or probably the hardest par three on the course, uh, 395 feet. Like you said, roller is the play. Uh, lay it down really left or right of these trees that the drone is approaching right now uh, and get through one of those gaps and just kind of see what happens. Air shot, you can maybe catch a skip and get up to 40 feet or so, but pretty difficult to get any closer than that. Pretty difficult to get any skips on this. <laughs> Today, yeah, this yeah. weekend, like I'm, you're looking at this drone, you're like, oh, you can skip there, but no, that's a, probably a puddle today. Most likely mud. Yeah. Carlson should see a roller from Linus. That is a sapphire, if you were wondering. And gets through that inside gap, but then takes a sharp turn off to the right a little early. We'll see what he can manufacture from over there, but it gets a little tricky. It does. Ellis, this is right. Yeah, this is way right. Yeah, yeah you can see not happy with that one. Um, it could get lucky and have something, but what? We'll, you know, I guess we'll find <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, we'll find out. Girthy, going with the Roadrunner roller. Oh, and this has landed down nicely. No way. Goes out on the left side, curls right back around. Absolutely parked. Double G doing just incredible things out here. That was awesome. It's going to put him five down through this front nine. Great pace. Absolutely going to gain another stroke as Corey is not in position. Adam has the angle but does not have the right line as he finds one of the guardian tree islands out there. I get that second one and stopped. Yeah, and he's got kind of a boring round going here. Unfortunate, you know, <laughs> like it's nice to be clean, but yeah. man, he's got to feel like he needs some birdies. Yeah, he's probably losing, losing pace here to the rest of the field. Ellis, his second, is firmly in the middle of this tree island. I think he's going to be able to pitch through to the, the good side. And, oh, oh, wow. Dang, Corey. I almost made that. Carlson pitching up. This almost looks tougher than Corey's. 
Yeah, able to get a lot of spin on that, though. That's impressive from that stance. Adam to save par. Is Double G going to go last still? <laughs> he might still <laughs> be, be closest to pin. It was, I feel like it was just outside bullseye if it was even. That's an incredible shot. Like I said, third most difficult. It did average over par. 74% of the field did get a par, uh, but only 10 able to get the birdie. Ellis saving par. No problem there. And now G finally gets to touch the drive, drop in the birdie, and push that lead back out to three strokes. A little cushion. As he heads into the back nine. Yeah, great birdie, and you've got an easy par four coming up. He could be able to string a few together now. Mm, very true. Carlson slides home his par. That is all we got for the front nine. That man right there has built himself a three-stroke lead. And as you see, Joel Freeman, six down, still trying to make a push for that podium spot, maybe even a win. Kevin Jones, Connor O'Reilly also shooting some hot rounds, five down. Well done by the gents. Gary Gerthy, three-stroke lead. Can he hold on? We'll find out in the back nine. Catch you there. <laughs> 